the walk. Now, one of the last things you want to do with a walk is come up with a formula, but there are certain mechanics that you have to adhere to to just make it work, you know. So let's see. I'm just gonna draw this one here. Get your ground established. And then uh, one of the poses that you have to have in this thing is the also we should I should mention that for a walk you have to lean forward a little bit because it's it's actually controlled falling as we know. The pose I usually start off with is the widest stance with the feet. In other words, this is the furthest that they'll spread apart at any one time. We won't worry about the arms yet. That's a little gravy that we add on later. Now, one good idea when you're doing this is to just really quickly, you could use the side of your pencil and just go like that and shade in the, always the arm and the leg that's the furthest away and try to keep this open, the one in the foreground, so that you can always keep track of that. It's, you can get really uh, messed up or fooled if you try to animate without putting that in there. Okay, so there's the, the first one I usually start with. Then that's the furthest reach out, and then what happens is he, as he plants his foot down, comes down like this, and as it as it hits, of course, we're doing a, an in-place walk right now, where it's just a cycle in place. So that means the background's traveling along, and the foot travels along the ground like this and winds up about here. That's where all the weight comes down, <clears throat> which means the pelvis has to shift down like this. The head comes down. And then the leg bends, the knee. Now as you go through this and you block this out, you might have to readjust the leg that's traveling here. You might have to scooch it up a little bit forward or a little bit back, depending. You'll see later on when we get into it. So anyway, this is the furthest down position. This is the bottom cushion that the character puts all their weight down. So what happens here is the, this leg swings forward like that bending at the knee and put a little drag on the foot like that so it wouldn't necessarily be like this which is not necessarily going to happen just yet that happens a little bit later but you want to make it feel like it's being peeled off and coming around this way if you want to if you want to draw little arcs or paths of action to keep track of where the heel is going to go that's cool too it's okay to put all kinds of arcs and stuff on this in fact you'll probably need to do that just to keep track of everything because it is a little complicated, there's a lot of things going on in this, that's why the walks are usually pretty difficult. <clears throat> okay. Shape it in. It's there, it's there. Just keeping that lean forward. Keep it loose, don't get too tight, not yet. This way, this comes down this way, <clears throat> and that, these are. I'm just going to do the major necessity poses that you have to have the major keys to make this thing work. So we've got the normal reach out and the squashing down, and then the next one we're going to do is the highest point in the uh, in the walk. And his head going to go up a little bit higher than this one. Not too much because uh, if he were to stand up straight, he wouldn't go too high. <coughs> Again, keeping them leaning forward, parallel like this, not, not doing this. Don't pivot at the pelvis, but actually let them rise up and down like this in, in a vertical alignment like that. That's important too. So you're trying to keep all these angles parallel like that as they go up and down. <clears throat> okay. And this one, <clears throat> this leg that's already planted is traveling back. This one comes up and reaches out. So this knee comes forward here, swings forward, and then actually it's, it's pivoting over this arc here as it swings down, and then as he comes up, it actually pivots up and out like that. The 
So he's unfolding or reaching out with this thing there. That's where this foot starts to stop dragging and starts to tuck forward like this because it's getting ready in anticipation to be planted down like that. Only this is the uh, this is the rear foot that we're working on right now. This one over here is the foreground one. So let that travel back. Can you see that? Okay, should I put the bottom line on? There we go. basic poses that you at least have to have to make any walk work. Now this is your standard, you know, basic walk and it's good to learn this one first and then you can do variants based off of this and go crazy and do all kinds of other things that are, pertain to the character themselves, but this is just the getting the mechanics down so you can go from there. So remember to keep the, the head going up and down and the torso up and down. Watch this, this is always easy to lose track of. Is, making sure not only that this goes up and down, but this goes up and down as well. So it goes down here and back up a little bit higher than the last one. So, okay, I'll go forward here. <clears throat> now, one trick you can do <clears throat> is since we're basically going back into this, we're cycling back into this, but it's the rear leg. So if you need a little help trying to figure out this next pose with the rear leg coming forward like that, you can just throw this one on top, put a blank sheet over it, and just generally, just basically trace over that first one, <coughs> like this, just real lightly. I'm always making sure that you're pretty much on that ground plane. <coughs> and now what you're going to do is, instead of this being in the front, you're going to switch them while flipping from your previous one into the next one. You want this leg to come out here. Try not to make it an exact duplicate of this or else it'll pop. So that's the rear one. I'm going to shade that in real quick. And then this one now is the foreground one. And you can bend this a little bit so it's not exactly like that either because that'll avoid, that'll help it not pop. If you're doing, if you work this early on in this cycle back into that exact same pose, only switched, it'll just look like it's just popped back into this and it'll, it'll jar the viewer's eyes and make him wonder what's going on, something's wrong. They couldn't figure out what it is, but they know that something feels wrong with it. So this is the foreground one. So as you can, as you can see, we've switched the uh, legs, but made it just a little bit different to vary it. Yeah, just a slight bit. And that's just enough to make it seem more alive and more natural. Okay, so put this back on the bottom. And we'll roll through and see what I've got. This first one, the furthest reach, the squash down with the weight, the knee bending and starting to travel forward. Foreground leg is passing by. This one gets ready to reach out and then the one reaches out. Now here I've noticed already I've lowered the head down, but the waist is in the exact same spot. So I've got to lower that down as well, which means that where the leg attaches is going to have to be a little bit lower too. Down there. So this is what I mean about adjusting as you go. You'll be doing a lot of that, so that's why it's good to keep it nice and loose. Always be ready to make adjustments and changes as you go. That way you'll be on top of everything. <coughs> Don't ever get locked into something where you say, oh, I can't change it. <coughs> okay. And now all I do is just work from this one and cycle it back into that one. So in order to do that, I take that bottom one, which is the first one, put it on top. And in between these two, I will flip the connecting join. So that's the reach out. Wash, where it comes down, 
Oh, and also we're going to go over flipping too a little bit on an individual basis. We'll we not come around and help everybody a little bit more with that flipping because it's so important. So now that rear foot travels back to about there, let the knees bend. If you get confused, just take these other ones out. And if you get confused with the order of these, go ahead and number them before you take these other two out, just so you can keep them in order. Real easy. I'm just going to work with these two so you can see where I'm going here. That one to this one. Comes down, same thing here. This, this leg starts to come forward, a little bit of drag on the foot. should be a piece of cake since we've got it <clears throat> pretty much all described in here. If you feel more comfortable drawing this ground line on every drawing, that's okay. It just takes a second. <clears throat> so we've got this one, goes down, and we know he's got to anticipate with this leg to swing up before he reaches out. So we're going to have him come up. This is the highest point again. this might be a little bit off balance here like that might be too straight so I might want to bend that just a little bit I won't know until I shoot it for sure it might work that's another thing about having a little play in these roughs is you might discover something that you wouldn't normally have thought of okay so there it is it goes back to that and that's the hookup to the very first one so I'll put them all down and roll through them 